Well, the fascination is the central character, Thomas Cromwell. The story of Henry VIII's reign has been told many, many times in drama, on film, in novels. But the most interesting man has been left out of it until now. And the question I am asking, which drove the enterprise, was blacksmith's son to the king's right-hand man. How do you do that? It seems a very contemporary question, as well as a very Tudor question. I think Cromwell is a study of a man who pulls himself up from nowhere to become the most powerful guy in the country. It was an absolute mystery, an enigma who came to England as a young man knowing so much more than a lot of people knew in England about how the world works, about politics, about commerce, about mathematics, about military strategy and about how he became useful to very powerful people. If New York had existed in 1530 he would have been here in a shot. He would have been mayor in a month. I have to say you don't have to be familiar with British history because the, the plays tell you all you need to know, really. Which when people see, particularly if you see it all in one day, it's, it's a huge journey. What little I knew of Anne, um, and all, a lot of information was destroyed. You know, you think of her as a seductress. She certainly holds a kind of sexual potency. Uh, um, I didn't, hadn't quite taken on board how incredibly hardcore and cerebral and bright she is. I mean, she's so manipulative. It flies by. It moves at such a pace. It's a lot funnier than you think it's maybe think it might be. Um, it's kind of just it's dangerous and terrifying. I think he's given a much more critical going over by Hillary. So he's not such. He. he He's far more complicated. He, he has a dark side, as all the characters in this play do. It's, an, it's a universal story. It's amazing how it, 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 it just keeps going. People can't get enough of, 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 the, of the Tudor drama. I mean, I think when you become an actor, there is definitely a thing where you would like to do a show at some point where you get to wear a big dress. I think, you know, when we first started, so I've been with this from the start when we were at Stratford-upon-Avon with the RSC, um, and, you know, these two huge scripts slammed down on the table. Are, I mean, they're the best that they've ever been. <laughs> Nathaniel is a dream. Oh, He's, a so <laughs> He's a dream to work with. The fact that Catherine and Henry were married for 22 years, which I didn't appreciate. And I think he was married to all of his other five marriages, amounted to about eight years. So she was the, she was the keeper. She had six pregnancies. One child survived who was Mary. Uh, she had one boy who survived for 52 days. He was called the 52-day 52, 52 prince. So I hope they kind of are excited by seeing these iconic figures who are very human, uh, all rushing around trying to make sense of everything. And so I hope it gives them a kind of fresh feeling about, about the Tudor era. This is a very different King Henry, and that is a joy. This is not anything we'd seen before. And it's not down to me, actually. It's down to Hillary. Uh, it's down to the rest of the company. It's down to Jeremy Herring, the director, mostly. Um, but it's Hillary's version of Thomas Cromwell and Cromwell's version of Henry. I jumped out of a cab on 30th, 30th Street uh, and, and people were recognising me from the posters already. I was going, yay, we're here! <laughs> and, um, you know, bringing a show to Broadway. Uh, I'm in my 40s now, but it's been a, a, you know, a, a constant goal. Uh, throughout my career. Something about how Cromwell as a character and our portrayal of him connects to contemporary culture. He occupies a morally grey area that seems to speak to our times very specifically. 